Well, praise the Lord. We are on day 16. And this is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. God is faithful, who promised, who called us, who also will do it. Put your trust in the Lord. Trust in his goodness. Stand on his word. Don't bow. Don't bend. Don't break. Uh, because God's word cannot change. It cannot be broken. It cannot be altered. It cannot be amended. His word is forever settled in heaven. In other words, it's over. It's done. Uh, when God speaks, everything has to move. Uh, everything has to come in line with what God says. What we want to do is we want to allow our spirit man uh, to speak and our spirit man to hear from God and allow our mind, our will, our emotions to be quiet so that they can re receive instruction. Today we want to pray for our leaders. So critical. Everything rises and falls on leaders. Um, the Bible says that when, that when the shepherd is smitten, uh, Jesus says, if you strike the shepherd, the sheep will scatter. When the sheep scatter, they become easy prey for the enemy, easy prey for, for the wolves. And so the enemy wants to scatter the sheep. And the way he does it, his tactic is to destroy godly leadership. He has to destroy the pastors. He has to destroy the leaders in the church. And if he's able to do that, he's able to pluck off the people of God one by one. So it's important that we pray for our leaders. We want to pray. The Apostle Paul was the greatest apostle of his day. He prayed in the spirit. He said, I thank my God I speak with tongues more than all of you. He was a man of prayer, but he also requested prayer. He said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 25, brethren, pray for us. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, he said again, pray for us, pray that the word of the Lord uh, may run swiftly and be magnified as it is with you. So when we pray for our leaders, we're really praying God's blessing on ourselves because when our leaders are strong, we're able to receive the word of God and be built up to do the work of the ministry. So it's important that we pray. Man, <laughs> It breaks my heart when I see leaders fall, when I see pastors being scandalized, when I see that the enemy has an opportunity to blaspheme. You remember when David sinned with Bathsheba, the prophet Nathan said to David, because of what you've done, you've given the enemies of God the opportunity to blaspheme. And so we want to pray for our leaders, that they walk in holiness. Uh, I want to read, read, read to you a scripture as you pray for them. And we want to pray uh, that these are the kind of leaders that we are seeing in the church. And as a leader, I want to be this kind of leader. I want to embody this word myself. It says in Titus chapter 1, and I'm going to begin reading at verse 6. Paul instructed Titus, who was a son in the faith. He was giving him instruction in the church to raise up leaders and to anoint those who would be leaders in the church. And so he says in verse 6, I'm reading out of the New Living Translation. An elder must live a blameless life. He must be faithful to his wife. And his children must be believers who don't have a reputation for being wild or rebellious. A church leader is a manager of God's household, so he must live a blameless life. He must not be arrogant or quick-tempered. He must not be a heavy drinker, violent, or dishonest with money. Rather, he must enjoy having guests in his home. He must love what is good. He must live wisely and be just. He must live a devout and disciplined life. He must have a strong belief in the trustworthy message. 
he was taught. Then he will be able to encourage others with wholesome teaching and show those who oppose it where they are wrong. We want to pray in Jesus' name that we have leaders who fear God, who fear God more than they fear people, who will not compromise with the word of God to appease people like King Saul did. King Saul was not looking at the word of God or God's instruction. He was busy looking at the people. And I pray in the name of Jesus that God gives us the grace when we preach the word of God not to look at the faces of people to alter or to deviate the message to accommodate the wants or the whims or the itching ears of people that we will preach the word of God as it says in the name of Jesus that we will preach the word without compromise and that in the fear of God we will live before the people. I pray in Jesus' name that no leader, no leader will get divorced in Jesus name. That every leader, every pastor, every elder, every apostle, every bishop will understand that their first ministry is to their wife and to their children. In the name of Jesus, we pray for the children of leaders. We pray that their children will live holy, that their children will be examples, that their children uh, will be, uh, will model, that the children, our uh, Lord, will credit, will validate their ministry, for wisdom is justified of her children. And we pray right now for the children, the sons and the daughters of ministry leaders, that they will follow the example that is set by their parents and that their parents will prioritize uh, ministering to the children and not just ministering to the flock or ministering to the church in the name of Jesus. We pray that we have leaders with whom God's people are safe, that God's leaders are not going to use or try to manipulate the people of God for personal gain, that they will serve them, that they will give themselves, that they will lay down their lives for the flock of God. A good shepherd gives his life, lays down his life for the sheep. May we have such leaders that fear God and walk in integrity, that as leaders we don't sin against the people by neglecting to pray for them, but that we will pray every day for God's flock, for God's people. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord, for our pastors and leaders. We thank you that they are encouraged, uh, that they don't quit. They're not falling back or falling away, but they're looking unto Jesus, uh, who is the great shepherd, the ultimate pastor, and that as under shepherds of the great shepherd, we serve God's people and we live to lay down our lives in the name of Jesus to the glory of God. Through the love of God, we lay down our lives and we're driven and motivated by love, we pray in Jesus' name. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you as we continue in prayer and fasting.